meditation. It's a moving meditation. So we're actually gonna start, just close your eyes. Um, we're gonna uncross our feet. We're gonna place our feet flat on the floor. And we're gonna have our palms just resting comfortably on our thighs. And you're gonna close your eyes. So sit up tall in your chair and feel your feet on the floor. Feel your legs relaxed. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And a slow breath out. Okay, and we're just going to open our eyes. And I'd like just if somebody or a some people would just raise up their hand and just tell me what you were thinking. Anybody? Any thought that just came into your mind right now? How I could help someone else hear this. Perfect. Um, I just had an overcoming sense of threat. Perfect. Anything else? Calmness. Calmness. If anyone think like, Oh, I forgot to put lipstick on this morning. <laughs> or, what is she going to be talking about? <laughs> or something along those lines back there. Um, there you go. That's what I was looking for. Exactly. Okay, so she said just how crazy her hair was. How she thought her hair looked crazy? Yes, yeah. My blow dryer broke. My blow dryer broke. There we go. Okay, the purpose here is to show and give example that when we actually close our eyes and just are sitting, what happens? Thoughts. So thoughts are coming up in our mind all the time. So we're constantly, all day long, we're thinking about things, we're talking to ourselves in our mind, we have this continual, all day long conversation going on in our mind. So as soon as we sit quietly, as soon as we stop talking, we close our eyes, we shut off those senses, what happens? The mind doesn't shut off. So we can, we can attempt to shut other things off. We can say, okay, let's sit down and let's be quiet. But what happens? The mind continues to wander. That is the purpose of the yoga practice and the meditation practice is to shut off the mind. So the question is, how do we do this? <laughs> That's where the practice lies. And the key word is practice. Practice makes progress. It's not just a hashtag. <laughs> uh, so when you practice quieting your mind and <coughs> shutting off those thoughts, your brain actually changes. It actually changes. And this has been scientifically proven that through yoga, through meditation, through these practices of quieting our mind, we are actually changing our brain, we're actually changing parts in our brain that um, cause us to have fear, they become reduced. We actually change parts in our physical body that um, triggers our parasympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for relaxing and digesting. So this is all done through yoga and meditation. So what we're going to do now, any questions first? Okay. What we're going to do now, I'm just going to guide you through a little um, meditation. And then we're going to talk about how you can start to integrate some of these tools that you're going to learn into your daily life on a regular daily basis. Okay. So we're going to start the same way that we just did. We're just going to have our feet flat on the floor, both feet grounded. And you can actually feel free to sit down too if you want on the carpet, if you want to get off the chair. Um, okay, and then palms flat and on your thighs. Feet on the floor, close your eyes. So feel your spine lifting up. You're gonna lengthen your spine. And relax your shoulders, relax your face. And we're going to start 
with our breathing. So inhaling through your nose, all the way down into your hips, and then exhale through your nose. So we're going to continually draw the breath in and out through your nose. And then you're going to visualize a white light. So you're going to visualize as if you're breathing in a white light. It can be a sphere of white light or just maybe like a cloud of white light, but try your best to visualize just a pure white light. And then see that white light, and as you breathe in, you're going to breathe that white light in through your nose, in through your sinuses, down your throat, into your chest. See it filling up your lungs. See so your diaphragm opening up, and then draw that breath all the way down into your belly and fill your belly up with this pure white light. On your exhale, slowly, gently compress your belly ever so slightly and softly, and then push that white light all the way back up. We're going to draw it back up through the belly, back up through the center of your torso, through your diaphragm, through the lungs. See it going up through the throat, up back into the sinuses, out through the nose, and breathe it out. We're going to continue to do that. Inhale through your nose, breathing in the white light. All the way down into your chest, down into the belly, and then slowly Now continue with your breathing. Continue to elongate, lengthen, deepen your inhale. And then slowly, gently, calmly breathe your breath out. And then I want you to focus on the top of your head. So just, just get a sense that you're visualizing or feeling the top of your head and then relax the top. And then work your way down and relax your face. So you're going to relax the space between your brows. Even feel your eyelashes. Feel the weight of your eyelids, your eyelashes. Relax your nose. Relax your cheeks. Relax your lips. Relax your jaw. Your whole face. And now relax your neck. You're going to relax the front of your neck, the back of your neck, the length of your neck, relaxed and soft. And now relax your shoulders. So just think that everything that we carry in our shoulders, it is melting away. You're letting it go. It's just dripping off of you. Anything, anything before this moment, anything after this moment, just letting it go. It's no longer serving. And then relax your arms. Feel the weight of your arms and your hands just resting gently on your thighs. Feel your arms relaxed and soft. Be sure to continue with your breathing, inhaling through your nose, settling it deep towards your hips. Exhale slowly, calmly, and gently. Coming back to your body, your torso. Visualize and feel your torso. Feel your chest, the front of your chest, your torso, your ribs, your belly, the entire front of the torso relaxed and soft. And then feel the sides of your torso. Feel the sides relax. Now, as you're doing this, it's very easy for the thoughts to pop back up into your mind, and this is totally natural. If your thoughts are popping up, just notice them and then let them go. And then come to your spine and your back. So feel your back, feel your spine, and relax each vertebrae running down your back. 
relaxed and soft. And then notice your hips. Feel your hips sitting on the chair, relaxed and soft. And then go down your legs, both your thighs, your knees, your shins, and allow your legs to soften. So both of your legs are completely relaxed and soft. And you're going to feel your feet and feel your feet on this floor. Stay focused on your breathing. And this time, as you breathe in, visualize your breath running all the way down into the soles of your feet. And then visualize roots growing out through the soles of your feet. And these roots are growing and dropping, digging deep into the layers of the earth. grounding yourself. You're feeling and noticing your connection of your body to this earth. Take a deep breath in all the way down into the soles of your feet, into your roots, and then you're going to pull up that grounding energy that you just created from your roots, and those feelings. From making that connection to the earth, you're going to draw that all the way back up into your body. So you're going to feel that energy from earth coming all the way up through the soles of your feet into your legs, all the way back up into your body. And feel and know that you are connected, you are grounded, you are safe, you are nurtured, and you are deeply, deeply loved. Now breathe into that, inhale deep and full, deep as you can, full, deep, elongated breath in through the nose, bring it all the way down into your belly. Slowly breathe your breath out. Inhale. Slowly just wiggle your toes and your fingers. Bring a little bit of movement back into your body. And then you just slowly open your eyes. Take another big breath in. Slowly breathe your breath out. Now inhale, stretch your arms out and up towards the ceiling. Just reach up, stretch, 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 stretch. Exhale your hands down. Very good. And we're just going to take a little bit of a twist. So just turn your body to the right. And then turn your body to the left. Just kind of bringing your, getting back into your body a little bit more here. And relax. Very good. Okay. So, how does everyone feel? Some comments here, a little bit of feedback. We're so zen out, we can't even talk. <laughs> okay. Grounded and connected, awesome. Very good. Okay, so I think the most important thing to recognize here is that that maybe took, I don't even know, was that five minutes? I don't even know if it was five minutes. So it doesn't take very much time. It doesn't take that long to change how we feel. And I'm often telling people, um, you know, the littlest thing that you can do is three deep breaths. So literally three deep breaths. So I say, before a meal, so that's a good way to, to, to think of it. So every time you go eat your breakfast, lunch, and your dinner, before you eat your meal, 
you take three deep breaths. So just like what you did. Now, the point of the breathing and what we just did is actually called diaphragmatic breathing, yoga, or, well, it's called ujjayi breathing in yoga or belly breathing. Um, and what this is actually doing is, is it's actually, we're expanding and contracting the diaphragm. So a lot of times when people are just learning how to use this elongated breathing, they tell me things like, oh, well, I find it a little bit difficult to really get that full deep breath in. Well, that's because your diaphragm is a muscle. So the more you breathe, the more you focus on really using um, this type of breathing to really elongate the inhale and elongate the exhale, that muscle will start to stretch, just like anything else if we stretch our body, any muscle that we have. So the more you practice your breathing, the easier it gets. Now, the other thing that we're doing while we're breathing, we're really focused on that elongated inhale followed by the elongated exhale. There's a reason why we're doing this. Because when we're in a stressful state and normally through life, obviously as we're going through life, we have a very shallow breath. Oh, I thought you had a question. <laughs> um, we have a shallow breath or a short breath or we're not even breathing. So think, think just, I mean, we can all think of a stressful time. We're go, 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 go. Kids are driving us crazy. We've got deadlines. We're busy at work. And it's like, we say to ourselves, I don't even think I breathed today because you probably were A, holding your breath, or you were having that short, shallow breath. Okay, so what does that do to your body? This actually activates the nervous system of fight or flight. So when we're holding our breath, when we have a shallow breath, we're actually physiologically telling our body that it's not good. <laughs> Basically, we're saying we need to run away, we need to move, we need to get going. So our, our blood pressure is increasing, our, our mind is racing, all because our breathing is either we're holding it or it's shallow. So what happens when we slow down the breath? Well, when we slow down our breathing, everything in our body and our mind changes. So we're physiologically responding to how we breathe. When we slow down, when we stop, we slow down the inhale, we slow down the exhale, we're actually telling our body, hey, it's okay, everything's fine, I'm okay, I'm safe, basically. Then what happens? Our body changes physiologically, activates parasympathetic nervous system, and kicks on and starts to produce the chemicals in our body to calm ourselves down. So that's why, literally, you can take just two or three deep breaths and you actually feel like, oh, wow, I actually feel a little bit better. Because you allowed yourself to just stop and have that breath. Now, just by breathing slowly and, and mindfully, the pace of your breathing is reflected in your body and your mind. So if we're go, 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 we're fast, 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 our brain is going to be <laughs> going crazy, thoughts and thoughts and thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. If we slow down our breathing, if we calm down, if we just take that, those, those breaths in and out, we're actually telling our mind, well, our mind is just naturally going to slow down, and those thoughts are going to become less and less, and we're going to realize that we're actually not of our thoughts. So, how does this all interact and come together in the yoga practice and in meditation? Well, because yoga is basically a, a, pra a life practice. So, your yoga, your yoga poses, think of it this way, your yoga poses are like situations in life. Some yoga poses are really easy, you love them, you're like, oh, I feel so good, this is so relaxing, I feel great. Some yoga poses are really difficult, you're like, this yoga teacher is crazy. I can't believe she's making us do this. You know, it's difficult. You feel it more physically in your body. So what happens? The way that we're, we are responding in our yoga practice is the same way that you're responding in daily life. Your brain does not know the difference between a physically challenging yoga pose and a physically challenging or mentally challenging day. So say you have a stressful day. Say your kids are driving you crazy. You've got a hard day at work. 
your body and your mind are responding the exact same way as it would if you were in a yoga pose. So, that's amazing, <laughs> right there, because if you get on your mat or if you do your yoga practice, you and you're calming down your mind in your yoga practice, then what happens? It's naturally crossing over and integrating into daily life. So you're actually training your brain, you're training your body to say, it's okay. Calming down, focusing on breathing, shutting off the mind, clearing those thoughts, finding ease and grace within the pose and in life. It's the same. So maybe yoga is not your thing. How about that? There's other things that you can do that can be in a similar manner. So for example, maybe you like to dance. Maybe you're, uh, you're an artist. Maybe you just like meditation. You're not really into the physical thing. That's okay. But if we take it in the same way, that finding something that works with you, what you enjoy doing, maybe it's just a walk, a walk in nature. So grounding, so healing. And as you're walking, you're focusing on clearing your mind, calming your thoughts, letting it go, and being present, focused, and grounded in the moment. Those practices, in turn, start going into, into your daily life and this is when the magic happens. You start to see you have a stressful day at work and normally you would be responding in a specific way and you say, oh, I'm just gonna stop. And I'm just gonna take a breath. And it's really just as simple as that. So it changes your brain from being reactive to rational. Any questions? So if you want to learn more, there's lots of amazing yoga studios and um, amazing um, even dance studios that I know of too that are doing very mindfully based um, education like this. So there's lots of place, um, places that you can go to. Um, I'm going to just shout out Gina again. She's amazing and awesome and a pioneer and amazing yoga teacher in the community who's probably say the exact same thing that I just said, so, uh, downtown yoga, and um, if you have any more questions, any questions, any questions? Oh, <laughs> I teach at um, Integrative Healing Arts Studio, I'm located in Tecumseh, on um, Sylvester Drive, just off of Manning Road, and, yeah, sorry, we are moving, we're moving to Emeryville, actually, in January. Um, in the new Med Art Building in Lakeshore, the Old Knights of Columbus. So we're really excited about that. And Integrative also offers a, um, a multitude of different complementary therapies that we have. Um, we have Reiki, we have Psych K practitioners, we have massage therapy, we have acupuncture, um, we do Reiki trainings, we do a lot of workshops. So um, there's lots of good stuff going on at Integrative.